Classy Kicks on today's show, well, a few more things have come in for my Dino Blaster restoration project. Now, this has been quite a popular uh, car, and I've had quite a few comments and feedback and things like that. Um, a lot of people were like, leave it alone, don't do anything to it. Um, uh, and you shouldn't change things, and you shouldn't uh, upgrade and, and things like that. Um, this car actually had... I'm kind of restoring it back to standard, um, where this car had wrong wheels and the body's actually painted wrong and things like that. So for me, I like to get it back to exactly how it was, but I actually quite like these colors. And I'm not gonna destroy this body, I will keep it. Um, when I run this car, uh, obviously I'll change the wheels to protect them and I'll use other wheels that came with it. I will run it with this body, but I'm not gonna destroy it, but, in this box, I have a original Tamiya body and original de decals, which I'm gonna open up soon. I picked up the colors um, that the car should have been in the first place. Um, the biggest controversial thing that I get a lot of comments about is changing things like chassis. Because at what point is <laughs> the triggers broom uh, scenario? If you don't know, uh, Google triggers broom and go and watch the clip, it's really funny. Um, it's an English comedy thing, but where, one, at what point do you change enough of the car that the car then becomes a different car? And is that a problem? Is it not? And I think it's something that everybody who's into vintage stuff has to find their own little niche of where they're happy. You know, um, a classic example is my first restoration car I did on the channel was the Boomerang. Now I changed maybe 95% of that car has been changed. Electronics are still original, the chassis is still original, but all the arms, the wheels, the suspension, everything has changed. Now, if it's 95% a replacement, is it an original anymore? At what point do you stop being an original? Well, for me, I left the chassis in that car, um, the original. Now, the reason I left the chassis in there, even though most of all the underside and the arms and the bumpers, is if I'd have changed the chassis, I'd literally changed everything. So the chassis is original. Now on this, um, I used a, with, with the boomerang, I used a lot of re -re parts, whereas this was never re -read. So I have a different feeling personally to this car and how I would approach this car versus that car. Now I restored most of that with Ruby parts, not vintage parts, where this car is being replaced 95% with a original parts, because this chassis is an original chassis. It's just a spare one. It's not from a Riri or anything like that. Now the only things that are from Riri's on this are the tires, and I think the wheels were on another car, so they are technically not vintage parts but everything else I have is a vintage part. Um, the body is an original Tamiya body that comes from a Stadium Thunder, but it's from the original mold that stamped out this original body. So I don't care about that either. And the decals are original decals from when the car was brand new. And I'm happy with that. For me, that's fine. Um, I'm trying to restore my cars to be as, as mint as possible, that when I do drive them, I drive them on the flat, I change the tires, um, and I don't bash the living daylights out of them. And that's what works for me. Now, you might go, if this was my car, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna leave it as it is, and it's vintage, blah, blah, blah. That's cool too. There's no rules of what's better one way or the other. Um, so there you go. So I'll stop off Flint. We'll open up the stickers and have a look. The stickers, yeah, uh, this car I thought was too special um, to go down the Riri route for the stickers. Um, and the stickers obviously also, there's a lot of gradients and things like that and a lot of different colors. So it's a bit more challenging to make Riri stickers anyway. So that's why I bit the bullet and went with original stickers over Riri stickers, even though the price of um, these stickers, as I'm sure you all know, is redonkulous for what they are. So there we go. Bigger than I thought. So there you go. Original stickers from my bank. Also, there's a set of silver stickers in there, which you wouldn't get like that from a um, you know going down the MCI and stuff like that. 
So uh, I'm chuffed, but I just won't think too much about what I paid for a piece of paper with some stickers on. Um, I'm amazed that someone hasn't just mastered these. Um, so they're exact copies because these are not like hologrammed or anything. They're just standard stickers so that someone doesn't make them exactly the same. So I don't know. I don't know anything about making stickers, so I have no idea if there's something that, that Tamiya do that other people can't do or what. I don't know. Um, but normally I go MCI if I can't get original or the price is the original are just too insane for the car it's been stuck to. Now this is an expensive car and it's a rare car. So again, I could invest a bit more money into this car to make it mint. Whereas some cars, they just don't hold their value. So um, yeah, you can't invest the kind of money for original stickers because you're just writing the car off. You pay more for the stickers than you will for the car when it will get a bit stupid. So there you go. So that's my stickers, so I'm chuffed with that. Not the easiest thing in the world to find either. Um, right. So, the body. Now, one of you pointed out to me that this body was used in a different car, which is fantastic, because originally I thought I was going to have to go down the Team Blue Groove body. But, luckily, another car carries this body. So I have purchased one, and it is the Thunder, Stadium Thunder. Now, it came as a group with the stickers as well. I'm sure at some point I will do a uh, restoration for a Stadium Thunder, so I'll sit on the stickers. Um, I've got a Stadium Blitzer, which is basically the same chassis apart from the wheels, a different color. So whether I'll do a different body for this, or at some point maybe I will just add a Stadium Thunder just for the channel or something like that. <laughs> The difference between these two is quite a lot. <laughs> Let's have a look. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we go. So it's exactly the same body. No difference at all. No, it's exactly the same. It should have on it somewhere. It should have a stamp on it. it normally does. There we go. So it says on here, Tamiya 1993, 58123-089-5201, which is that chassis, uh, that body, identical. So I can swap this over knowing full well that is an original and I have the original stickers. So I'm not, I'm not taking off original parts and putting on fake parts for a car of this. It will still stay uh, exactly all Tamiya. The wheels are original Tamiya, the tyres are original Tamiya. So there you go. And all my spare parts that will make it back to mint. There is one. <laughs> now here's a contradiction. And hypocrite too. Yes. These are the official colours. The yellow, the red, the, the black. Right. Now this car was painted in the completely the wrong colours. But I like it. So that's why I'm not going to get rid of this body. I'm not going to sell it either. I'm going to keep it. But one thing I really like is if you take this yellow, which is the original yellow that is supposed to be, and you put it next to the stickers, it's it's kind of that yellow. <laughs> um, might be a bit better to look, check it on this. So that's the yellow, and it kind of, yeah, it kind of is that yellow. The stickers changed. Mm, I think the stickers are slightly different because they're, they're stuck onto a colour. So the colour shines through the stickers a bit. Because this looks more like that. But, looking at the way that this was painted and this was painted and where the stickers are on, that's this colour, which is uh, PS19 Camel Yellow. Now, I prefer that colour to that one. It's kind of warmer, softer, and uh, I like the look of it on this car. <laughs> so, I bang on for 10 minutes about uh, making everything original and stuff like that, and then I find myself being a bit of a hypocrite and going, oh, I kind of like this color. I kind of like this camel color. But, even though I actually prefer the camel colour, looking at the stickers, they are yellow, which is that colour, not that colour. But I think what happens is when you apply them 
to the darker color underneath, like when you stick them on, it brings the color of the yellow down to kind of be a little, lot closer to the camel. But uh, I'm thinking about it as I'm talking to you, I think I'm gonna stick with the yellow. I'm gonna go with what it should be because if I'm gonna put that much effort into keeping it stock, I'm not gonna risk it. And I have this body so I can also enjoy this body. So that's it, I've talked myself into it that I will not put camel on this car. I will keep it exactly standard. Right, so time to paint the body. So first of all, we've gotta cut it out get it all lined up, make sure it works. So that's the first thing. So I'm gonna clear the boxes away and then we're gonna crack on with cutting out the body. And just like that, bit of magic. Oh yes, and when you're restoring a car, one thing you don't wanna do is end up buying two of the same thing because that's kind of stupid and who would do that? Yeah, I mean, why would you end up buying two of something you needed for one car? because that wouldn't be stupid, would it? Now, I know what you're thinking. Why do you do that? Well, yeah, that, that would be me. So how did I end up with two? Well, it goes like this in my world. I need a body for it. I found one. Um, it came with stickers that I didn't really need, but it was a job together, so I bought it. The minute I clicked the button and it was on its way, uh, I was approached by someone else with another one that was almost half the price of this one. So of course, I thought to myself, this one's much cheaper than this one, so I'll buy it, even though I didn't need it. So that's why I've got two. I, I, I can't make this stuff up, I swear. So I have two of them. Now, the only way I can sort of redeem myself is by thinking to myself, but at some point I'm going to get a original Stadium Thunder and I guarantee it will need a new body. So now I have the body, but I still got two lots of stickers. A, it is what it is. It wasn't, they're not that expensive anyway. So that's why I have two of these and one of them. Ah, well, there we go. We live and learn. No, no, we don't. This is not the first time this has happened, ever. Oh. So I've cleared up my mess, and now it's cutting out the body. This one looks pretty easy. Um, sometimes you get them from Tammy where they actually cut out the arches for you, and then you just do the sides, but on this body, there's nothing. Luckily, the arches are quite wide, so it's easier to get your, um, scissors in sometimes the very tight small ones are much harder um, get yourself some curved scissors uh, if you haven't already you need some like this they're great they really help and then you just go around it take your time don't just hack into it get rid of the overhang first so just cut around the overhang and then that gives you more uh, access to do that there is no secret to it i tend to just take my time and then get as close to the line as i can without going over the line and then i just finish off with sandpaper um normal sandpaper these are just some random discs that i've had lying around so i use these um because I have them. But you can just get normal sheets of sandpaper. Sometimes you might want to put it on a roll. So you can get a tin to do that. And that gives you your curve so that you can get into your um, arches better. Um, that's about all the secret there is to it. Taking your time, don't hack at it. Um, the only other thing I've seen is when you're cutting this plastic, don't cut to the end. You know, when you go like this and you, you go all the way to the end, you go the end click. The end click is not what you want because what happens is at the end here, you get like a little tiny, tiniest little split so that when you do your next cut, you get another one and another one. And then you end up with these little kind of like jaggedy bits. So only cut to like two thirds and then move two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. Don't go clunk, 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 if that makes any sense. And you'll get a much smoother um, cut. That's, a, that's about the only trick I can uh, to give you on bodies. 
it's all about taking time, not rushing. Uh, that is probably the number one thing, is just going slow. There is no rush. Anyway, right, so we're gonna cut this out and then I'll be right back. So I've now cut out my body, I've sanded it, it's all ready to go. I've even drilled the holes for the mounts. Now is actually a good time to do that. Don't leave it till you've painted everything. Because you can see through it, what I found is if you take the body, place it over the top, line it up, and then what I tend to use these are just my tip, my tips, you, you know, your mileage may vary or whatever. And I take a paint pen. Um, this one is like a white one. And then I just put, line it up exactly where I want. And then I just touch the body in the positions. Um, on this particular car, there's one at the back and two at the front. And they're actual different sizes as well. So I lined up the one at the back first. I did that. I then pushed it over and then that held it in place so I could, all I had to do at the front was get the center. I didn't have to worry about back and forward. Then I did one, drilled it out, lined it up, then I did the other. So that way you're not just guessing too much and you're not going too far down the road where you can't get back from. Because um, if you drill it in the wrong place you've ruined your body. Start with a little pilot hole and then step up to the right size for the post size. Um, once you're done, test fit it, make sure it's okay. You can use a reamer if you've got a reamer or a drill bit. I use a drill bit personally because I don't have a reamer. I would use a reamer if I had one, but I just haven't got around to purchasing myself one. Um, and then once you're happy, test fit it, make sure it's okay, make sure you've got all your clearances. Um, I've sanded down this body, so all the arches are now sanded. Um, if you sand down the body, you're less likely to have any splits because splits usually come from a position where, you know I was saying before where you cut it and it, it snips through, the little tiny crack is will, will expand. So by going around and sanding off everything, sanding around the edges so that all your edges are nice and round helps. You don't want any jagged edge whatsoever all the way around the car. And then if you do that, if you feel that you get one, then just go and sand it down a bit more because it means the body is gonna last you a little bit longer. And then that's how you end up with a perfectly fitted body. And then you move on to the second stage. Also drilling your holes at the beginning means if you make a mistake, yes, you've destroyed your body, but what you haven't done is wasted $25 or whatever, $30 of paint, masking up and time and then destroying the body as well as if you put the stickers on before you do it so i like to do them now so that you know that the next thing is the paint job and then the stickers are last if the paint job doesn't work out which it can do sometimes paint jobs don't work out can be bad due to weather can be um you're rushing different types of paint if you're painting with for instance um i've got here um Pearl, smoke, smoke is very difficult, and then a the color. The different uh, viscosities of these is really different. The way you paint with this is not how I paint with smoke at all, and uh, clear as well. They're different ways of painting. So if you've never painted with smoke and you've never painted with clear and things like that, but you're used to just using these, don't just jump into it the same way, practice. Because if you, uh, paint your body and then you smoke the windows and you just spray it all on, it will run like crazy. So a uh, little bit of practice, take your time. Um, but taking your time is going, less is more when it comes to painting, cutting out and things like that. Right, I, I, th I think I've very much covered everything. Next, we've got to put the window masks in and then I've got to look on this body. It's actually quite difficult because the color change between the yellow and what would be the red kind of goes up through this sticker. So I need to mask where that actually is that's hidden by the sticker. So that is a little bit tricky. The rest of the car um, isn't too bad. I've got to mask around here for the front color, but that's not too bad. Also having a used body does help. It, it does help. So next thing, window masks in. Oh, also, I'll probably scuff this body up a little bit. 
with a green scourer. I don't know if I've got any. If I've got a green scourer that's slightly worn out, I will scuff the inside of the body to get better um, paint ad adhesion. But I don't know if I have one. Hmm, that's going to be a problem. Um, I don't plan on running this body. This is going to be my shelf queen body. So I'm probably going to be okay. Um, especially around the front because this, this truck, the body is the front, the, the bumper's underneath. So um, this is where you're going to get flaking. Looking at the original body, um, this one, yeah, there's a bit of scuffing at the front here, but it hasn't actually blown that much paint. Um, it tends to be, seems to be, when the front is hit, it's blowing here and on this side. So if anything, the stickers have failed because of age, but the paint that was applied was actually applied very well because it hasn't flaked off. The paint job itself is actually okay. It was done quite well. It's just the wrong colors were used. All the colors that they preferred were used. And I, I do kind of quite like it. What I'll probably do with this body is I will buy some aftermarket stickers and only change the ones that are damaged, which is basically this one, this one, and the same on both sides and then leave all the original give it a good polish and it'll actually come up quite nice there's no actual damage to this body so uh, it, it, i'm not gonna I, I think it's definitely worth me putting a little bit of effort into it i wouldn't put uh, original stickers on this again um but i think i can keep most of the original stickers and then just gently work around it and then you probably won't notice so and that will be my driving body right Let's crack on, let's get the wind mask in, scuff up the body if I can, um, and then we'll do the first paint. The first paint job I'm thinking will probably be the silver. Probably the silver first. I actually did something like this on, on this truck. If you look at the back, I actually did the same sort of thing on that. Did take a while. So I've decided to do a few little tweaks just to raise the body, attention to detail, that kind of stuff. So on this actual body, you'll notice that it's black uh, all the way across. What I've decided to do is I want this sort of uh, fan system to be red. So I've masked it off. Also, I've used the stickers so these are going to be see-through. And then when I put the stickers on the top here, you'll actually be able to look through them into the car this section is going to be red and then we'll do the rest as normal so i thought i'd push the boat out a little bit because it's quite a special car um so i've actually sprayed it red so far where the stickers are actually in there i'm gonna to have to peel the stickers out and then when i put the stickers on the outside i'm gonna back it in white as well to give it a little bit more pop because i'm gonna do the metal work's gonna be silver and then it's gonna be backed in black so if i back it in black it will die down the red color. So I'm gonna back it in white in a little bit. My only concern at this time is the stickers are actually recessed. So every time I spray it, the spray level gets higher and higher so that I won't be able to pull the stickers out. They'll be embedded in the paint. Or if I can, it will just tear the paint. That's my only concern. So we'll have to see how we go. So this is where we got to. I've highlighted the air conditioning sort of uh, air intake thing, the same red as the rest of the body, and I've painted up the bars for the chassis. Um, I don't think you can see in there, but I'll see if I can get a better shot. Um, it's actually, there you go, that's probably better. You can see it's highlighted. Um, so I've actually highlighted it with smoke to make it darker around here and darker at the corners where it would go into the body and it's looking really good. The two stickers that I have uh, there, I don't think you can see them. Those stickers, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to take them out because underneath, uh, if you can see, they're uh, just about covered over. Um, I will try because ideally I want these to be see-through if I can, but I don't know. They look fine like that, but it might be worth trying to see if I can get them out. So the next thing is to take all the masking out because I've got to do the black bed next, which is the same as on that one. So then I've just got to mask it off again and we do the black bed. Um, on the actual other car, the stickers come with a silver back window 
it's just a silver. Whereas what I've decided to do is I've actually masked mine off. So I'm going to have a proper window here. Um, what I'll do is I'll take the original sticker, which has the mirror, and um, I will cut out the mirror section and just have the outline so that I can have the back window basically the same as the windscreen. If you can see the windscreen's got a black surround to it, that will be on the same on the back. Um, yeah, so there we go. So next I've got to take all this off, mask it all back up again, but with just a black bed. All right, let's crack on. Well, I'm back. I've painted the black area, so that's now done. I've also removed the two stickers from the uh, vent holes and that came out okay. So far, so good. It's taken quite a while. Um, next, I've started to mask off the front section. Oh, let me see it's too bright. Uh, the front section so I can blow in the red. I've got to do the back area. So I've got to basically mask off all this side, but I've got to line it up so that the cut between the two colors is hidden by the stickers. So I've got to work that out. It's not too difficult, but I can kind of do with a bit of thinner masking tape really, but it's fine. Uh, I'm glad that I put the extra effort in with the blending and the, uh, the holes. So it will lift the body and make it a bit more interesting. Also when I have the back window as well. So yeah, it's coming along. So the next thing is I'm going to let it dry overnight now because I'll need to mask these off and I'm going to be putting masking tape around here. So I'd rather all these layers dry out overnight and tomorrow evening I will crack on again. Actually, I could think they actually put a line in, in the plastic. Yes, there is a line in the plastic to follow. Oh, that's handy. I didn't see that before. I've just seen it in the light. So that helps me to mask off. So that's good instead of me just guessing. Front was very easy. I just followed it around. Most of it is under the stickers. So you can only see the join there and there. So I just made sure that I lined that up fine. All the sides are basically covered by stickers. So we carry on. Right, I've managed to get the red on the body. I masked off the back section and the front area, which is gonna then become the yellow on the back and on the front. Um, came up okay, no problems at the moment. It's fine, I will back it in white to try and make it pop, but I wanna paint the yellow first and then I'll back the whole thing in white. So it's not too bad. It's very different to the body that came with it. Obviously this is the correct colors for the car. This is box art and that's not. I still quite like that. I, I'm gonna polish this up and uh, change the stickers, definitely. Um, I do like these colors. I can see why someone went with those versus this, this kind of color. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's all coming out all right. Um, I left the window at the back as well, so yeah. Next, I've got to remove the masking tape from the back and the front and then I've got to blow in the back section in yellow and the front, then I'll back the whole lot in white and we're finally done. So let's crack on and get the uh, masking tape off. So I've painted up the body, I've sprayed the yellow and I've removed the cover. Um, all in all, it came out pretty good. I'm reasonably happy with that. Um, there was, a few little things that I'm not happy with that I'm gonna go back and fix. And I thought I'll show you how to fix one or two little issues. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you're painting lots of different colors, you're building up and taking down all the masking tape. And one of the things I find quite hard personally is if you get overspray on the outside or whether you get overspray on the inside. Now, when you're spraying bright colors, if you're spraying black and then you're spraying like yellow or red, if you get any black overspray inside the body, when you then back it in yellow or red or anything that's very light, you can see any little black dots that are overspray. Because before you paint it, you can't really see them because they could be on the outside of the body, not on the inside. So I go around and try and remove as much as possible just to make sure. But sometimes what happens like you'll see here, 
there is a tiny bit I don't know if you can see that I don't think it's gonna show up I'll uh, I'll put a screenshot I'll take a photograph of it and I'll put it up here so you can see it um, there's a little bit of black and there's a bit of overspray now if that happens don't panic it's not like you've destroyed your body first thing I tend to do is look to see if there's actually a sticker over it in the first place if there's a sticker over it which there is a little tiny bit of overspray inside here but there is a sticker that runs right along the shoulder so you won't even see it so if you can't see it don't worry about it you don't have to fix it but sometimes like I've got here in the corner that there is no sticker on this corner and because it's so high it's a high point you're gonna see it so the little tiny black marks I've got I don't want there so it's worth me going back and removing them so I'm gonna show you how to fix a little bit of underspray showing through um, to really get the paint job perfect because like the front is absolutely bang on there's not a single mark or anything the lines lovely I mean you won't see most of this there'll be stickers but on the tail I want it to be absolutely perfect as well so what I tend to do is I look at where the area is and then the color so all I need to do is remove it and repaint it yellow so that's not so much of a problem um, there is a few other little bits and pieces, but most of this you're not going to see. So I'm going to leave everything apart from the little black dot here and the little black bit here. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is going to be, I might get rid of that little red dot there. So to do that, what I do is I get a bit of Tamiya body cleaner and I get a couple of these which are just like long earbuds now what you do is you take some of this you just soak this in here and then all you do is find the location you want to remove and you basically rub it out until it's completely gone so I've now removed the paint around the area so if you can see so it's just like rubbing it out it's as simple as that so I now have rubbed out and because I'm removing it, you know when you've actually cleared the black because you've removed the, the, like the yellow and the black's underneath and you get rid of that. So you know that when you look through and it's completely clear, you know that you've actually got rid of it. So next time, next thing I'm gonna do is go back and I'm just gonna blow this over in yellow again. And the yellow will fill in these, these uh, gaps and you should probably not see anything. If you don't remove all the black, it will still show up a little bit, but it's way better than having the black mark there. But you'd be surprised how well you can blend in the color underneath without having like a line or anything. So the next thing is to do is to mask it off a bit more and blow it in again. So I'll be right back. So there you go. I've sprayed back in the back of the car and it's now perfect. And you, I don't know if you can see, but I'll post another picture that I've completely fixed the issue. Now, this is a great little technique that works for any kind of scratches inside, any kind of overspray inside. You can just remove it back, paint it again. Um, and when you remove it back, as long as you get rid of the original contamination, once you blow it back in again, you get no seams or anything like that. So you haven't written off all your hard work. Two windows here so that when I put the, um, you have to just go easy with the tape, take it off, that when I put the vents in, st the vent stickers, the vent stickers will look through into the actual body of the car. Let's make sure I don't like putting stickers over fresh paint. So if you look, I don't know if you can see there, you can see right through. So there we have it. I backed the inside in white. You can still see a little bit of the color in there, but it was mainly just to neaten it up a little bit. And it makes the colors pop a little bit more vibrant. So um, the only thing is those two there, because there's um, holes, I had to mask it off so it's not perfectly painted. I should have left the stickers in there longer, and then I would have had nicer, neater holes. 
but that's only on the inside and it's a bit of white paint that I had lying around as well so right so that's the windows out and it came out fine on this car there's two windows that has surrounds so you don't have to be so super precise as long as you stay within the edge you don't have to have super sharp lines that's the front and the back that I've decided to do um, instead of using the sticker um, the windows uh, the side windows are the ones you got to pay a bit more attention to so I was a bit neater with those ones versus the front too um, if you have a, a previous body it helps you to really understand where you have to put the extra effort in and where you can hide it um, so again the back window I didn't really pay perfect attention so it's not perfectly true but it doesn't really matter because the sticker's going to cover it same with the windscreen I've got it you know pretty good and I could just leave it like that but it comes with a sticker that goes around it with the top bit on it which is what I'll do so that's fine um, so yeah quite happy with that now I need to decide whether I want to actually smoke the smoke the windows or whether I just want to leave it as it is and put the stickers on it right so I smoked the windows slightly uh, only just it's still drying a little bit but um, just to take the edge off because there's a lot of space inside um, from that point of view and to darken down a bit of the white around here because it was shining through um, so pretty much next is take these off and then we have to fit the stickers it does feel like this painting job has gone on for ages so I have my uh, legit stickers don't ask Whew. Whew. I think they are more expensive than gold by weight um, also there's some silver ones as well so let's get cutting out I'll fit the stickers give the car a full polish and then it's finally finished another thing um, since I started doing this I purchased these wheels because my uh, Dino Blaster when it came had different wheels anyway turns out these are the wrong rims for this car now they are the correct design but the uh, finish is wrong. There's two types of these that I found out today. There's these ones, which are the really chrome ones, and these are from the uh, Re Re, oh, something buggy, street buggy, I think it's called, something like that. And the uh, Dyna Blaster ones are like a satin finish. So yes, luckily I managed to find a set. So I picked that up this morning and they're coming because these are the wrong ones. I will keep these ones because I'll put these on um, when I run the car. Um, I'm actually going to get some road tires so that I can keep the wheels and the, the tires mint. And then when I drive it, I'll swap over to these rims with the other ones. Um, that or I'll sell these rims. Ah, oh, we'll, we'll see. Then they're, they're quite easy to come by, so they're not super difficult. But the Dyna Blaster ones are different. They're more matte chrome. Um, they seem a bit harder to find, but luckily I found the set. So yes, right, stickers. Okay, I'm gonna cut the stickers out, fit the stickers, and I'll be right back. Well, we finally finished building the new body for the Dino Blaster. Do you wanna see it? It's all finished. There we go. All finished. Um, these two stickers down here, I don't know if you can see, these two stickers uh, down right at the bottom down here, they're not standard, these ones here. And the reason these are here is this is really badly designed. This is three stickers, but the way they did it is not really good because it's, re it's not precise at all. And if you get overlaps, it doesn't work. As well as the body flexes a lot here, there's lots of concave so the stickers don't stick very well so to try and hide a bit of that 
um, where the joins are, I put these there. I think Tammy should have done that by default. Um, personally, I think they should have got you to, if I was gonna do this again, I would spray this corner yellow. Um, I wouldn't have sprayed that red. I would actually mask that off. So if, if you're gonna do one of these, when you're masking off this area here, this little section at the bottom, you should spray yellow as well. So not just the front, but that section in the corner here, so that when you lay up your stickers, you won't have to worry too much about um, your coverage. But all in all, um, I really like it. It's a really nice car. It looks great. Um, I wouldn't, it's taken me a long time to put these stickers on. So uh, I would say it was more an advanced body to actually do. Um, the way that all the stickers line up and they all join each other and there's some real curves and things like that that can be a real problem um, around these corners, the back corners. So this car is not really a, I'd say it's getting towards an advanced sticker setup. Um, so it's been a lot of work and it's taken, gosh, it's taken a good few hours because you've got quite a few different colors going on. I mean, you don't have to go to the same level that I did but even doing the bars, masking off the bars, doing the black, masking off the red with the windows, then masking again for the yellow at the front and the back, um, and then doing all the detailed stickers that you gotta cut out. It's quite an in-depth body. So what do you think? So that means next I have um, new, new rims coming like I mentioned before. I have a load of new parts. I've managed to pick up a few other bits and pieces. The, the bottom section of the car, I'm replacing this. I've managed to sit, source a plate to replace that plate. I've got the chassis, as you know. Um, so the car should be back to pretty much perfect um, once the other wheels come. Then I, I decide what kind of motor I'm gonna put into it. Also got a slight problem here where this wheel is not sort of catching slightly, but it kind of moves. So I've got to look, I think it needs to be shimmed. But there you go. So um, next video will be all the body work to be done and swapping things out and stuff like that. Anyway, thanks very much. Please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Finished. Oh my God, that took forever. Oh man, this body is hard work. That's taken some effort. Oh my God. Oh, thank God it's finished. Thank God, thank God.